Hi everyone, it's Marianne and welcome to my Oasis Life. In this video, I'm going to give you a beginner's guide to the ficus loretta as well as share with you the best ways to increase humidity for your houseplants. So the ficus loretta aka the fiddle fig is a very popular houseplant especially among millennials if the majestic palm is the plant of our parents the fiddle fig is definitely ours it's not exactly a beginner plant but it is definitely a gateway plant for a lot of new plant parents and for myself the ficus loretta started my houseplant journey i did share the story of my ficus loretta in my 25 days of plant mist ficus loretta episode so if you haven't seen that go check that out but my fiddle fig was actually a rescue plant when i got it and now you can see it has grown so much so it's very possible for a beginner to take on the ficus loretta and be successful with the plant it has a reputation for being finicky but it's actually not that hard to care for when you give it the right conditions and proper care it is definitely not the easiest among the ficus the rubber plant will be the easiest one i would recommend any of the ficus elasticus the burgundy the tanniki or the ruby ficus elastica those are wonderful beginner house plants but compared to the other ficuses like the ficus benjamina ficus altissima ficus audrey the ficus lorata is definitely a lot easier to take care of compared to those types of ficus the key to the ficus lorata is consistency especially with lighting and water for ficus lorata it needs bright indirect light and i would mean a south facing window or a west facing window it won't do well in a north facing window or an east facing window and bright indirect light would mean pushing it back a couple of feet away from a south or west facing window making sure it's receiving plenty of light but light is not directly hitting it the ficus lorata don't like being moved but it should be rotated often so that all sides of the plant are receiving equal amounts of light so if you haven't gotten a ficus lorata yet and you're thinking of getting one this is the best time to get it compared to getting it in the fall or in the winter since this is the growing season where we have the maximum amount of light and great temperatures so there's not going to be much shock for the ficus serrata as it moves from the greenhouse to the garden center and into our homes and when we first bring it home even though you think you have the perfect spot for it it might still shed leaves the ficus serrata does that as it adjusts to its new environment so don't panic too much just let it be and as long as you're seeing new growth then your ficus serrata will definitely bounce back and thrive when it comes to watering the ficus lorata don't like getting wet but it doesn't like getting too dried out either if you're getting a regular size ficus lorata it usually comes in a 10 inch nursery pot so what you're going to do is to check the top two inch of the soil to see if that's dry and when that's dry go ahead and water the plant for me that would mean watering every seven or ten days depending on the weather over the winter time it might be between 12 to 16 days so yeah water your ficus loretta when the top two inch of the soil is dry and never let it go dry for too long because your ficus loretta will hate it and it will have a hard time bouncing back whether you're top watering or bottom watering make sure there's a tray underneath to catch all the water and let your fiddle effect sit in the water for quite a while so that it will absorb back the water especially if it's in a larger pot the water might have not got into all parts of the soil especially within the root ball so just give your plant enough time to absorb all the water it needs but do not let it sit for more than 24 hours because then you don't want to have root rot so make sure after 24 hours you get rid of any excess water that's in the tray underneath the pot and when it comes to fertilizing a fiddle of fig if you're a beginner just use a liquid fertilizer the best npk ratio for a fiddle of fig is a 3 1 2 npk ratio online you can get a fertilizer that's specific to fiddle of fig i'll link it down in the description the one that i was using last year and since it has an npk ratio 3 1 2 you could also use it for your other house plants not just for your fiddle of fig and that fertilizer says that you could use it every week if you want to to fertilize your house plants but i think it's a little bit too much even though it's a quote-unquote gentle fertilizer for a fiddle of this size i'm fertilizing it every 20 days but if you have a smaller fiddle effect like those baby fiddles that comes in a four inch or six inch pots i suggest just fertilizing it every month during the growing season and during the non-growing season which is usually the winter months do not fertilize your fiddle effect when it comes to repotting your fiddle effect only repot your fiddle effect if you really really have to and when it's root bound otherwise i would just completely avoid it i haven't repotted my ficus lorata ever since i've gotten it it's still in the same nursery pot and it still has the soil it came in when i got it from the garden center i have top dressed it a couple of times but other than that i haven't repotted it i'm thinking of repotting it this growing season but as you can see its roots 
it's not that root bound yet so i might wait a couple more months before i decide if i'm actually going to repot it or not those are the basic care tips for a ficus lorata other common issues that you'd run into while taking care of ficus lorata is browning leaves and depending on where the browning is if it's on the edge it could either mean overwatering or underwatering unless you really know that you have neglected watering it i would earn to the side of it being overwatered instead of being underwatered because you don't want your ficus lorata to experience root rot another browning issue that you might experience the browning comes from the middle of the leaf that might be a sign of a bacterial or fungal infection which might be hard to bounce back from if you're already experiencing that because a bacterial and fungal infection in the plant starts with the root system so once your root system is already unhealthy by the time it manifests the illness on its leaves is already too late so i don't really know what you could do that some plants do bounce back including a ficus dorata so in that situation the best thing you can do is just to monitor your plant and still maintain a regular schedule and maintenance for your ficus lorata. Like I said, the ficus lorata thrives on consistency. So if it's going through something, being consistent on your watering and the amount of light you give them, as well as humidity, etc., will help the plant thrive instead of keep changing up things for it. Just get stressed out and struggle more to return back to normal. When you see black and brown spots in different areas of the leaves of your ficus lorata, and especially if the leaves are drooping, then maybe you're also giving it too much sun and your ficus lorata is getting leaf burn. The best remedy for that is just to pull it back from your window and make sure it's not getting direct light, but bright indirect light. Another common issue with the ficus lorata is it having lots of red dots on the leaves. Usually it doesn't necessarily disappear but becomes less visible when the leaves become darker and mature there's nothing really you could do about it but if it has become very excessive and it's no longer just like scattered dots but like really large patches of red brown then there might be underlying issues with your ficus lorata and when you have those red brown patches on the leaves of your ficus lorata and you also see some white stuff on the surface of the leaves and you might even see some holes being formed well that means that you have a pest infestation it could either be scales or spider mites most likely it's going to be spider mites and the spider mites coupled with the red browning is usually a sign of lack of humidity for your ficus lorata as far as aphids crypts millibugs i haven't experienced those just constantly check your ficus lorata i do it every watering day just to make sure that there are no pests because if you catch them early they're very easy to get rid of since the surface area of your fidelia fig leaves are so large it's good practice to clean them regularly and the perfect time to do so is again during its watering day back then i used to use coconut oil lemon juice mixed into the water to clean my leaves stop doing that because regardless of how little coconut oil i use it always seems to be too much and i fear that i'm clogging up the spores which is located underneath the leaves of the ficus lorata but now i've switched it up to a solution of water mixed with castile soap or dish soap and neem oil extract and that's a great solution not just to clean the leaves but also prevent pests or control the pests that's in your ficus lorata so if you do have a pest infestation i would not just use it to clean the leaves i would use that solution to spray down the entire plant let the solution sit for a few minutes before wiping it off if there is any excess but if you're just using it for maintenance then i would just use that solution to help you clean the leaves if you are watering your ficus lorata consistently and you're giving it enough light you're fertilizing it but you're still experiencing problems with your ficus lorata but again just remember no house plant is going to be perfect i'm pretty sure like me what drew you to the ficus lorata is the instagram photos but just keep in mind no house plant is going to look perfect all the time and that includes the ficus lorata but if you're having some of the aforementioned issues with your ficus lorata even though you've been consistent with its watering and you're giving it enough light then the likely issue for your ficus lorata is lack of humidity. So there are many ways you can increase humidity for your ficus lorata or any of your houseplants. You've probably heard a lot of the tips and tricks already on how to increase humidity for your houseplants. But let me demystify some of those tricks and hacks because some of them don't really work. They're just a popular plant parent thing to do because it makes us happy, but it doesn't really make the plant happy. And I'm gonna share with you tips and tricks that actually do work and finally i'm going to do a review of a humidifier that a company just sent me to share with you all so one popular plant parent thing to do is to go mess your plants and 
I've done it. I've done it for like a full year. I do it twice a day for my plants, but I've stopped doing it for the last month or so just because, well, life got crazy and I just don't see the benefit of it for plants anymore. Honestly, I don't think it's helping the plants at all. Yes, if you miss them, it provide like humidity for like a minute. Misting the plants just leave water marks on the leaves afterwards and I don't think it's really worth misting the plants. I mean, it does it doesn't do any harm, but it doesn't really do any good either. So, you could miss your plants if you want to, but as far as helping increase humidity for your plants, it doesn't really do any good. And another humidity trick that's often suggested is having a tray filled with pebbles Fill it up with water at a certain point and put your plant on top of it. And that way as the water in the tray evaporates, it provides humidity for your house plants. And it might work for some house plants, but it's likely not going to work for a fiddler fig, especially a fiddler fig as large as mine, which is pretty much the standard size of fiddler fig that you will probably be getting if you go to a garden center. It might work for a baby fiddle, but it's not going to work for a fiddle fig that's in a 10 inch pot or more. And I also don't like having those water trays or leaving water containers around near the plant to quote unquote increase humidity. Like, like misting, it doesn't really work. It doesn't provide that much humidity for your plants. And second, it's just breeding grounds for pests and mosquitoes. So the best way to maintain and increase humidity for your fiddle fig or any of your house plants is number one, don't put your plant anywhere near a vent, whether it's your AC or your heater, especially don't put it right underneath it. Especially when you have your heater on and that dry air blows from the vent. The dry air it blows brings down the humidity for your house plants dramatically and it's very detrimental for your plants, especially for your fiddler fig. So the next tips and tricks that I'm gonna share to help increase humidity for your house plants, especially for your fiddler fig, are practices that you should be doing anyways to help create a great environment for your house plants. First is to improve the air circulation for your plants. Whenever you can, do open the windows so that fresh air could come in. If there's a little bit wind, that's great, especially for the fiddler fig to actually make its stem become stronger and sturdier is to have some wind movement for the plant. So that's why they say if you want to make the stems of your fiddle fig stronger and sturdier, shake them often. If you could bring them outside from time to time, especially during the growing season when the temperature is great, that would be awesome. The fiddle fig don't like to be moved, but if you are moving it to a lot nicer condition, personally my fiddle fig don't mind it, it actually likes it. So whenever I can, I do bring it out when the weather is nice. So next thing that you could do is to cluster your plants together. So when you have all these plants grouped together, they help provide humidity for each other. So the best way to provide humidity for your house plants is by using a humidifier. But how do you know if you need a humidifier for your house plants or not? So two things. First is where you live. If you live in a northern hemisphere like I do, where we experience the four seasons and we have a relatively dry winter, or even if you live in a warmer climate area but you have dry heat for most of the year, then a humidifier is something that you might want to look into to increase the humidity level in your home for your house plants. The average humidity inside our homes is under 30%, but our house plants, which are mostly tropical plants, would thrive better if the humidity level inside our house is between 40% to 60%, which is also a humidity level that is good for us, especially during the flu season. Second thing you have to consider is the type of houseplants you have or would like to get. So there are many houseplants that only require low level of humidity and could do without a humidifier. And these are a lot of common houseplants like the pothos, snake plants, ZZ plants, spider plants, most of the cacti and succulents, pileas, peperomias, some varieties of syngonium, and even some varieties of hoyas. Other plants in order to thrive indoors do require a higher level of humidity. These plants often fall under the aeroid family, which is a lot of philodendrons, monsteras, calatheas, maranthas, stromanthes, basically your prayer plants, caladiums, begonias, anthuriums, alocasias, some hoyas, and a lot of varieties of ficuses, including the ficus loretta or fiddlefig. So for a plant like the fiddlefig, using a humidifier would solve a lot of the problems that you're having with your plant 
because usually lack of humidity is the culprit behind the problems that you're having with your fiddle fig even though you're watering it correctly and you're giving it the right amount of light if you have a smaller baby fiddle you could probably get by without a humidifier yet but as your plants get larger like mine over the past year was able to survive without a humidifier but now that it has gotten larger it's already exhibiting a lot of signs that it's lacking humidity so in my winter care video last year i did go over humidifiers and humidity if you want to check that out is also up here and i recommended in that video that if you want to get a humidifier for the first time and don't really want to spend money on it try thrifting for one or getting a hand-me-down from a relative family or friend but in the post corona world that's probably not a good idea right now and a lot of thrift stores are closed anyways so if you're going to swing for a new humidifier might as well invest in a really good one between using a basic humidifier and using a humidifier like this Alicombs humidifier i find that the more efficient and more convenient it is to use that humidifier the more likely i am going to use it for my house plants and even for myself over the winter i tried using my cvs humidifier but i ended up not using it as much because a it's hard to refill it's hard to clean and it only has one setting and doesn't have a timer so i have to keep an eye on it and eventually it broke so that's why i stopped using it altogether and i did get it as a hand-me-down but the original price of that humidifier was i think around 50 dollars since i stopped using it and winter kind of got extended this year that we're having frost nights even in may my plant suffered including my fiddle fig which you've probably seen already in the clips it has a lot of red patches and suffered from spider mites even before alec holmes reached out to me asking to review or feature their humidifier in one of my videos i was already in a market for another humidifier not just for my house plants but also for myself due to covid19 i think a humidifier is just a good idea to get right now So this is the humidifier Alec Holmes sent me. This is the SH8820 model of their humidifier. They have several different models, but this is the model that Alec Holmes sent me to review and I'm really happy about this humidifier. I will go over all of its features and I'll give you my review as well as share with you a discount code for this humidifier if you're interested in buying it. So this is a warm and cool mist humidifier. It has a 5.5 liter capacity and it is for a large bedroom. So this up to 755 square feet and I have a smaller room. I am not sure what's the square footage of my room but a full-size bed pretty much take over at least half of my room so that's kind of like your scale there and then this reaches the humidity level that I want really quickly I also use it in my living room however and that is a bigger square footage because it is an open concept area with the kitchen and dining room also included so it's a little bit over 700 square feet so it doesn't really reach the humidity level that I set it on that I wanted to reach but whether in a small room or in a large room, it definitely reached the humidity level of up to 60% at least. When you take it out of the box, it already comes assembled and it comes with a manual, a cleaning brush, and two filter pads, two smaller filters for the aromatherapy box. It already also has the filter pads and the aromatherapy box filter already installed. So this is two extra sets of filters. So the humidifier, it has a humidity sensor at the bottom and mostly located at the back. So make sure this part is not covered or gets wet and the cord is attached. The only thing that I would like is if the cord is the type that you could detach, just, just make it easier to bring it to the sink, but it's not a big deal. This is the water tank cover. It comes out pretty easily. And this is the water tank that could hold up to 5.5 liters. And it does come with a handle, but if you are going to take this out to fill it up, don't just hold it by the handle, still support it at the bottom. It's not flimsy at all, but it could definitely be sturdier. So just to be on the careful side, if you're going to take this out to fill it up with water, just make sure you also support it at the bottom when you fill it up with water. But honestly, you don't really need to do that. You could just pour water directly on the top and you should be fine. And then this one is the air channel. And as you can see, there's already a filter pad down here. But if you need to replace them, they give you two extra ones. So this one is the float ball and this one is the atomizing plate. Just be careful with those parts and you don't really need to do anything with them. Just be careful with them, especially when you're cleaning it. But once you're done cleaning, just make sure the filter is down there and you can refer to the manual on how to properly clean this humidifier. You just have to put back the air channel 
and then put back the water tank just make sure it is fitted properly and you fill it up with water when you fill it water just try to do it from the back because you don't want this front panel where all the controls are to get wet and they recommended using purified water but i'm just using tap water i've been using tap water for the whole week and it's been fine if you're filling it up all the way to the top make sure it doesn't go over the max line and after you filled it up water just close it back up it should snap back pretty easy and then plug it in and turn it on so this humidifier is currently in my room and since i've been using it for about a week the humidity level is already pretty high so right now the humidity level is 66 percent but me using it in the living room on the very first day and my humidity level was at 30 percent in the living room when it was an 80 degree day and it was very sunny out so that was really surprising to me that even in a good weather condition the humidity level inside my home is still very low and it comes with a remote control that can be used to control all functions of the humidifier so you don't have to always walk up to it and press the controls you could use the remote control and I'm, that's what I'm going to use as I demonstrate the features of this humidifier the first thing is to turn it on and I don't know if you could see it on camera but it's already started steaming and right next to the on and off button is the humidity button which has three settings low medium and then high and on the second row is the timer and this has up to 12 hour timer so it, you could set it up to 12 hours you could just set it to run for one hour and right next to that is the humidity level so it can go from 30 percent up to 80 percent And when it reaches your desired humidity level, the humidifier would turn off by itself and it will also turn back on once the humidity level drops. Below that is the screen off. So if you don't want to see the LED screen, just press screen off and it will not show the screen anymore. And just turn it back on again. And right next to that is heating. So as mentioned, this is a cool and warmest humidifier, but it doesn't have just two settings. Over here is just a cool setting and that is a little bit warmer a bit more warmer and that's the warmest setting of the mist that's coming out for the humidifier and at the bottom it has a child lock so if you're using the remote control you just have to press it once and it would lock and if you want to unlock it just press it again but if you're pressing the child lock button on the humidifier itself you have to hold it for three seconds before it locks and then hold it again for three seconds for it to unlock and then the sleep mode which is great at night it would just turn off not just the led screen but it will also stop making the beeping sounds so that's the only annoying thing about this humidifier is the beeping sound but if you put it on sleep mode then you won't see the screen as well it won't make those beeping sounds and if the water tank becomes empty the humidifier would have an error sign on the led screen and it would automatically turn off and it won't damage your humidifier for the one week or so that I've been using this humidifier, if I fill it up all the way to the max, and if I'm setting the humidity level at 60% tops and I'm using it in my bedroom, the water lasts for at least two days. And this has a dual nozzle, so you could point one into one direction and point another in an opposite direction. So it has like a 360 coverage. And my favorite feature of this diffuser is the aromatherapy box that I could use my essential oils in it. And it has a warning on top of here that to not put essential oils into the water tank, it will damage the humidifier and will cause it to leak. So just put droplets of essential oil in the aromatherapy box. So you could just lift this one up and as you can see, there's already a filter in there. Use any essential oil of your choice. I'm using this Breathe Easy essential oil, which is a mix of eucalyptus, peppermint, lemon oil, tea tree, and Ravensara oil. And then I'm just going to drop a few drops on here and just cover it. And your humidifier now also acts as an oil diffuser. So like I said, this is my favorite feature of this humidifier. And when I was looking for a humidifier before I got this from Alec Holmes, I was specifically looking for one that could also act as a oil diffuser. And not all of them do. So I really like that this has that feature. The only thing is, I don't know if it's my essential oil 
because this is a very cheap essential oil that I got from CVS. It was on sale. The scent doesn't really last it long. It will be strong for like a few minutes and after that it's really really subtle and for a lot of people they might actually prefer that. They don't want like the strong smell of essential oil but for me I would like it to be a little bit stronger. And if you have any problems with the humidifier, you can refer to the manual. They have some troubleshooting guides on it. And you could also go to alecholmes.com slash support and send them an email, contact them. And they do have a 24 hour response time for any issues or questions that you might have with your humidifier. It does come with a warranty card and it says that it does have a 24 response time. Like I mentioned, a 30 day money back guarantee, a 12 month replacement warranty and lifetime support guarantee. And for returns and exchanges, you can go to alecholmes.com slash support. I would link that down in the description as well. But as I was talking to Alec Holmes through this process, they want me to let you know that if you register your humidifier on their website, you would get a three year warranty instead. And if you register it within 15 days upon receiving the package, they'll give you an additional 180 days on your warranty, which is really good. And to get 20% off the humidifier, you could use the code. I will also put it down in the description. So with all of the discounts and the warranty information, so it might be some cost upfront, but when you think about it, divided over three years and some, and with the 20% discount on the humidifier, I think it's a really good value with all of its features, but there is more. As I mentioned, the humidifier already comes with filter pads, but you could also install another type of filter inside the water tank just to give it added filtration and it would make your humidifier last a bit longer. So that filter usually costs about $15 but if you use the code 100 filter, you'll get it for free. But this is not a sponsored video. I am not earning any commission from Alec Holmes from any sales that might come through my video. I am though using my own Amazon affiliate links for the product link of the humidifier and the filter. So if you purchase the humidifier and the filter using my links down below, I would get a little bit of commission from the Amazon affiliate program, but not from Alec Holmes. So, so literally all Alec Holmes did is to provide me the humidifier so I can give my honest review on it and share with you the discount codes. If you have a $20 fiddle of fig, do you need a $100 humidifier? Probably not. But I do think it is a worthwhile investment, at least for my part, not just for my house plants, but for me as well. I do love all of its features and it's been working perfectly, but I have only been using it for like a week or so. So there's that. So my review is limited to my one week or so experience, but, but so far I've really been happy with it. And it's like, how did I not get this before? Cause it's amazing to have, not just for your house plants, but for yourself as well. So if you have any questions regarding the humidifier, do reach out to them at alechomes.com slash support. And I'll try to answer as much questions as I can based on my knowledge and experience with the humidifier. So just list them down in the comments, but yeah, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. My beginner's guide to Fidelifig, as well as ways to increase humidity for your house plants featuring the Alec Holmes humidifier. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I hope you subscribe. I come up with house plants and sustainable lifestyle videos every week. And if you haven't yet, go check out these videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you, I appreciate you, and have a plentiful day. Bye. Sweetheart, that's my spot. So what, you're gonna fill my intro for me? Since you won't get out of my seat? Hi everyone, it's Theodore Bentley, and welcome to my wasteless life. <laughs> right, good job, baby.